of the first games I played extensively as a child was Counter-Strike Source. I didn't really understand the gameplay of the regular game, instead I really fell in love with all of the mini-games hosted on servers. Things like Zombie Escape, Surf, Death Run, and Bunny Hopping servers were in my rotation. I only had one computer in my house growing up, and my dad, brother, and I all shared it along with my dad's Steam account. These mini-games were probably the only reason why I was allowed to play Counter-Strike at all, since my mom was totally against us viewing any sort of violence, which is why I have, till this day, never played a GTA game. I find it crazy that till this day, some, if not all of these game modes still exist in some capacity. Bunny hopping, or B-hop for short, was something that every game mode, including the main game, had an unintended mechanic of. Even a lot of modern games have it, although heavily restricted or nerfed, Back then, you can gain massive amounts of speed doing it, with no cap or limit. You would be able to carry your momentum off a surf ramp into the next ramp. But I ruined it for myself. I was a child, but that doesn't mean what I did was right. I decided to download something that could help me. At the time, I believed it was a script. I would load it and let it run in the background. I'm sure all it did was continually input jump while holding down the spacebar. This eliminated the timing part of b-hopping, so all I had to worry about was air strafing. This went undiscovered, and I always had it running in the background while I was playing. I utilized it on all my favorite servers, and I was known as one of the best players in each server I was a part of. Nevertheless, I was occasionally accused of scripting, but because there was no way to prove it, whatever I had must have been good. When someone b-hopped, I think the telltale indicator of cheating back then was that their jumps were occasionally silent, which meant that their inputs were too precise. My own never did that, therefore I was constantly defended as being legitimate. The twist is that there was one specific server where accusations grew to a breaking point. In a moment I'll tell you how it all turned out. Looking back, I think it was inexcusable for me to cheat like that. Even though it wasn't legitimate, it felt good about being known for anything. I eventually became bored of that game, and the game modes. I had spent endless hours playing. In fact, the servers I liked were closing down. I had to move on at this point, but not before I revealed the whole time I had been using a script to make my b-hops look genuine. I remember being accused for the last time and I was just not really having fun with it anymore since it wasn't really a skill I had developed on my own. They felt betrayed and with the server shutting down, all the regulars and admins had all removed me as a friend. I even spoke up on the mic for the first time and they all had hated me even more for being just a little kid just okay. cheating the whole time. To this day, I think about how if I had continued to practice like normal, then I would have that skill without scripts or cheats. Now B-Hop is not at all powerful or even considered as a mechanic in most games. I am able to bunny hop on my own, and I think it's funny whenever I miss the timing because I could have been a natural by now, and if I just practice it from start. Anyways, good must die everyone, I am Monest. Ever wondered if cheating in video games had become more sophisticated over time? Stick around as we delve into the evolution of cheating, and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below. Additionally, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more like it. Anyways, let us begin. Today, cheating has taken a more cunning turn, and it goes by the name Rewazd. What is Rewazd? and how is it unintentionally changing the gaming landscape. We'll uncover the details shortly, but have you ever used the tool for unintended purposes? Let me know below. Truthfully, this software was never intended to support cheating, which is why I'm disclosing its name. According to the developer, it is meant to be used for accessibility purposes only, and he never intended for it to be used for cheating. They even went on to say that they consider how people are using the software as cheating and by no means condones what they are doing. However, 
I recommend everyone who needs this software to enjoy games to use it. It is an amazing tool to help everyone who wants to play games to be able to enjoy it on the same level as anyone else. I should warn you though, that using this program may probably result in a higher chance of being banned, especially in online multiplayer games. You can find yourself caught in the crossfire as developers work to remove immoral users in waves as they use it to gain an advantage in games. Right now, every popular multiplayer first-person shooter has people using Rewaz to cheat. The finals is not the only game where players might get an unfair advantage. When researching the subject, I came across Apex Legends and Warzone, just to mention a few of them. You might be wondering how cheating is possible with software designed to support controller players and people who may use a unique controller. Well... Imagine a world in which advanced controllers are available to all gamers. What effect would it have on fair competition? Stay tuned to discover how Rewaz is unintentionally deceiving games into believing you are using a controller. Knowing how this software functions is the first step to comprehending how it is being abused, even in cases when the game may not fully support it. Rewaz enables you to utilize any controller with complete compatibility. You're able to perform actions such as adding shift modifiers, where you pick a button, which is your shift modifier, and while you press it, your bindings change to another set. You can add shortcuts, assigning any kind of mapping to the two, three, or four button shortcuts, add activators, like mapping for single, double, triple, or long press, and also for start, press, and release press. You can use slots, so you can apply up to four configurations simultaneously for one device and switch between them with customizable shortcuts that include three or two unique buttons. You can also remap the paddles uh, instead of duplicating just another button's actions. Now, the way that cheaters take advantage of this is by tricking games into believing that their keyboard and mouse is a controller. That might not seem like horrible on the surface, or you might be asking yourself, how would that even give someone an advantage? Aim Assist. Aim Assist is frequently overdone in first-person shooter games, but if it isn't, you can get stronger aim assist from additional applications, which can even mitigate recoil completely. In order to level the playing field between keyboard mouse players and controller players, aim assist is utilized in these games. This is a debate that I am rather passionate about and I honestly do not see a need for aim assist in a competitive multiplayer game. There are countless examples of people using a controller without aim assist who play as well, if not better, than many keyboard mouse players. But since it's there, why not use it? I wouldn't mind if it wasn't overtuned, which it almost always is. But as it is, it's often just too strong allowing even someone like me with next to zero experience using a controller to sometimes even outperform how well I aim on a mouse. Anyways, by making a game think that you are on a controller while using keyboard and mouse, then you are adding an aim assist to a mouse, which is a whole lot more accurate and precise than using a joystick. So if you tend to shoot ahead or behind your target, aim assist will track that target for you. It will enable you to increase your precision without requiring you to practice it. Although, I like to think that my aim is better than average. I still frequently miss the mark or shoot slightly ahead or behind my target. Hell, I would be on the same level as Tens, Asu, and Lyric if I had used this method of cheating. Now picture using this software in conjunction with another that lessens your recoil and amplifies aim assist. You would possess the most potent and covert cheats. However, if developers were to ban these tools, they would be banning players who are legitimate users of it. Worse even still, because of the existence of these undetectable cheats, there are things stirring in communities throughout YouTube.
The shocking truth is that some professional players and streamers have also been found to be utilizing cheats. I will shortly reveal one example. How do you feel about the legitimacy of some of your favorite professional players and streamers? I think the most popular ones that we know and love are without a doubt legit. Shroud, Fade, Dr. Disrespect, just to name a few. But these things have been around for a while. Who's to say that your favorite player, especially the ones who utilize controllers, isn't using one of these undetectable cheats? What about when they flex their skills by using a controller one time to prove a point, when they only ever really used keyboard and mouse? Who's to say they aren't getting an unfair advantage? This raises concerns about their credibility as a professional player. Numerous YouTubers, pro players, streamers have been exposed for using cheats in the past. Who's to say your favorite isn't among them? To put it another way, because these types of cheats exist, there will always be skepticism in the community. Many honest players have been, and still are, accused of cheating. And although it's possible that they aren't, who can say for sure what programs they have installed on their computers? One of great example of this was Nikhil Forsaken Kumavat. I probably butchered that. When Forsaken was discovered utilizing cheating software during an Extreme Lands 2018 finals, the team was promptly dissolved. Afterwards, ESL India discovered that during the ESL India Premiership 2018 Fall Finals, Forsaken had employed the same exploits. As a result, the player was banned from ESIC for 5 years. From what is known, he used a file hosting website to store his cheats downloaded them prior to the match, and ran them directly out of the RAR file. In order to conceal the harmful nature of the process in a process list, the deceitful program was given the name word.exe. However, this is a fairly straightforward method, which is what one might anticipate from someone with little technical background. Officially, the anti-cheat program discovered the malicious activity, which was most likely the process's hooking. The gameplay has also been rather obvious, since you cannot run files straight out of a RAR file without decompressing them first. The contents that he extracted from the file were also placed in the temporary folder. Consequently, not only did Forsaken run it incorrectly, but it also lacked any appropriate means of self-deletion. This was for a major tournament for a very large amount of money. If you don't think it is possible for someone you might look up to is cheating, then maybe you haven't experienced enough of the real world. For me... I've always had a passion for games. I think that playing video games creates an experience that is different from anything else that cannot be replicated. It's a means of entertainment, escape, hanging out with friends, and meeting new people. I've made some of my closest friends through games, all of which I still play with and remain in touch with. It's terrible that cheaters can destroy a game for you, or that your childhood favorite is riddled with a lot of bots and cheaters in it. Unfortunately, it will always be this way. Those who create cheats profit from people using them or from the developers helping them find ways to stop the cheating. Cheaters like making other people's days miserable or they like being the center of attention. I consider myself lucky to have avoided cheaters, or at least I'm just so good that I don't notice that they are cheating because they lack the actual skills to outplay me. <laughs> it's part of gaming, and it will always be a part of gaming culture for better or for worse. As we come to an end, consider this. Given the ongoing cat and mouse game between cheaters and anti-cheat software, what do you believe the future of gaming holds? Salamat everyone for watching. This time I wrote a script. When I do these kinds of videos, I like discussing the topic in the comments, so please let me know what you think and if I miss something, let me know. Tell me what I can do better. I'm still learning and I'm improving. Once more, salamat. Bye bye.